All right. Good morning, guys. Man, good to see everybody out on this. For a lot of you, man, it is cold, cold. I know out in Texas and Arkansas, man, y'all like in single digits with snow. Uh, and hey, guess what? Y'all can keep it. Uh, <laughs> I'll take my 40 degrees of rain right here in Georgia. Uh, and Y'all can keep the snow. And I know y'all got it in Pennsylvania, man, pretty much. I think it was like three states <laughs> down here in the south that was kind of missing this ice snow stuff that's coming through so uh but praying for y'all know so, uh, there's a lot that's been without power so just praying that this stuff passes on and uh that y'all are safe in your travels as you have to go through this so all right guys well i'm gonna open us up in prayer today uh man you may have heard us talking about men of valor conference is coming up in august uh that is who puts this on uh is men of valor conference and man we're looking forward i think man I hadn't even got a count right lately, but I've seen some more guys getting registered and I don't even know how many states are. I'll try to have that number for you next week. But I know last I counted, we was up to 14 or 15 states at least that's already registered different states that's coming to be with us in North Carolina in August. So go check that out, menofvalorconference.org and you can find out more, see our speaker line up and just, uh, man, we're excited and we can't wait. Uh, and that's where you're going to get to meet today. You're going to get to meet another one of our breakout speakers going to be bringing the word this morning. Uh, we're going to be doing this for the next few weeks. Uh, be sure, man, all these get loaded to YouTube. So if you're catching the playback, we're glad. Thank you for doing that. Go subscribe to our channel on YouTube. That's where we drop a lot of announcements. Uh, if you're not on Facebook, make sure you, you follow us on YouTube. So let me pray for us. And then I'm going to just shut up and introduce our speaker and just let him loose this morning. So let's pray. Father, we love you. I'm just thankful for all these men that are getting up early on a Monday morning, God, just to uh, open their hearts to you, to say, speak to me, Lord. I, I pray that our prayer would be, here I am, send me on this Monday. As we go out into our work week, Father, may we just uh, have the mindset, God, of we'll die before we quit when we're, when we're going out mentally, spiritually, physically. And Father, just pray over our speaker this morning. God, just may his lips of clay be a mouthpiece from heaven today. And Father, may our hearts be open to receive from you. Lord, we don't want to hear from a man today. We want to hear from the Holy Spirit. And God, may you speak, convict, and change us today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Well, it's my joy, uh, man, to introduce our speaker. I can't wait to get to hug this dude's neck in August. I've never got to meet him face-to-face. -face, uh, but, man, he's come a dear brother of mine just digitally through uh, the past couple of years. Uh, we're in SoulCon together in the Gaborum. And uh, me and him actually started SoulCon the very same challenge. Uh, we're challenge lima guys that, that jumped in on challenge lima so i've got to know brad over the past three years and just uh, just a dear brother so brad dayton my brother from pennsylvania go ahead and unmute this morning and uh, just share with us what's on your heart my brother yes sir <clears throat> man thank you um it is such an honor to be with you guys this morning uh it is early and my filter is not on so if i say something that offends you i don't care but <laughs> Uh, so we're going to dive in this morning a little bit um, and just kind of talk about uncomfortable uh, and following God. What does that mean? What does that look like for us? Um, I posted something the other day on my Facebook. It said uh, one of the main reasons that you don't follow God's call on your life is because of fear. You're afraid of what it will cost you. You're afraid of what you'll have to give up, what you'll have to sacrifice. Mostly because you know that in the moment that you say yes to God, it's all or nothing. Um, and I say that just because of the realities of my own life and the things that I walk through uh, on, on almost a daily basis. Uh, you know, God calls us to be what the conference talks about, men of valor, men of, of, of honor, men that uh, glorify him in every area and aspect of our lives. Um, but quite often, more often than not, what happens is, is when God really specifically calls us to do something, uh, in our lives, follow him in a certain way to speak to a certain person, we kind of shrink back in fear because we're uncomfortable. Uh, so when the word says go and make disciples, uh, we say, you know, I'm not comfortable talking to people about Jesus. That's just not in my wheelhouse. Uh, when, when the word says to um, <laughs> dive in and, and begin to study and really apply it to your life, sometimes you look at some of the things that are in there and you're like, I'm just not comfortable doing that. Um, I, I guess the question that I would have to ask then is, are you comfortable with God then? Are you comfortable with who he is uh, in your life? 
have you really spent time with them? We see all throughout scriptures, there's many different examples of, of exactly what I'm talking about. Um, take Noah, for example. <laughs> uh, God specifically called him out to build an ark, right? And it took him, nobody knows the exact dates, but roughly about 100 years to build this, give or take. And during the time he was building this, I mean, I'm sure people were making fun of him and uh, saying, you're crazy. You're absolutely out of your freaking mind. There's never been anything like this rain you're talking about. What are you doing? But yet he continued to press in and press forward. Talk about Abraham uh, and the promises that God gave him. And yet, you know, he tells him, hey, go take your son and sacrifice him on the mountain. <laughs> what? God, I'm just not comfortable with that, God. I'm, I'll just, no, we're good. You think about Joseph. Kid is 17 years old, gets beaten up by his brothers and thrown into a pit, basically left to die. And then they sold to sell him into slavery. And God continues to use him all throughout his life, even in the bad situations. And yet we say, I'm not comfortable sharing my faith. Think about Moses, a man who <laughs> led the Israelites out of Egypt, had to go before Pharaoh and proclaim God's word to him. And yet even he before God was like, I, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't speak well. <laughs> and God's like, that's all right. I'll send help. Don't worry. I got this. Same with Gideon. Uh, all these guys in the Old Testament. I mean, he was fearful and afraid and hiding and yet still trusted God. Think about David. Man, the, the, the pressures that were on him from his youth, even knowing that he was to become king and yet how God used him in a mighty way, standing before a giant. And God used him in a mighty way. Nehemiah. I love Nehemiah. If y'all ain't read Nehemiah, you need to go read Nehemiah. Uh, in the beginning, he hears about uh, the, the, the walls being down in his home city, right? Uh, in Jerusalem. And he goes before the king, who could very well kill him for being sad in his presence. And he tried not to be sad in the king's presence. And the king looked at him and said, why are you, why is your face downcast? Now, Again, you don't go before a king and be sad. But the moment that the king asked him that, Nehemiah did not hesitate. The first thing he did was pray to his God and then answer the king because he knew who was in charge. Think about Daniel, everything that he went through, captivity, all that stuff, being uncomfortable in the lines then, right? There was decrees out there that you will be killed if you did not bow down and worship, and yet... He still chose to worship God. Think about the New Testament Christians, everything they went through, all the persecution, the, the killing, the uh, imprisonment, all that stuff. And yet we sit here and we're like, man, I'm just not comfortable in doing some of the things that God has called me to do. I'll be honest. I was, I'm the same way in my life sometimes. And I know what you're thinking. All of these people were practically face-to-face -face with God or Jesus or in some way, shape, or form saw some miracles happen. But can I tell you this, that in America, we've got it easy. We do. We've become so comfortable in our faith that it's hard for us to really come outside of our comfort zones and really do anything that God has called us to do because we don't have to rely on God. We don't. Not fully. There are countries still that exist today where Christians are being imprisoned for their faith, persecuted for their faith, killed for their faith. You hear about stories of missionaries and things that are happening overseas in other countries that you only read about in the Bible, but yet they're a reality for them there because they have to fully rely on God. And yet we're uncomfortable in doing what God has called us to do. Uh, I saw a video a while ago of this guy, and I'm sure it's an older video. He said uh, he was in China and he was teaching uh, these Christians, and there's about 20 of them, give or take. And I'm sure you probably saw this video. And uh, they were talking about uh, different things, and and he basically um, said, "Hey, what would happen if we got caught right now?" And they said, "Well, you would go back to America, and the rest of us would go to prison." And so he asked the question, "Well, how many of you have been in prison for their for your faith?" And uh, just about every one of them raised their hands. Uh, and these 20-something Christians were in charge of what he said millions 
of people, millions of believers. And as he um, continued to talk to them, he actually gave them Bibles. He didn't have enough for everyone. And there was this one woman who had grabbed one and actually handed it off to somebody else. And as they began reading this passage, she was reading along with them with no Bible in front of her. And they asked her, how do you how did, how did you read that entire passage and yet have not the Bible in front of you? And she said, well, I memorized it. Well, how did you memorize it? Well, you've got a lot of time in prison to memorize scripture. <laughs> and you got to do it quick because they confiscate it. Now, I know that's an older video. And I know that, uh, again, it's in China. And, you know, we don't have that kind of thing going on here. But man, to be in a situation like that, to be uncomfortable enough in your faith, where you fully have to rely on God for everything. Here's a, here's a situation that hits a little closer to home for me. Uh, one of my students, I'm the campus minister of the university. One of my students is from Egypt, uh, specifically uh, a country called Qatar, uh, which is a Muslim run country. Uh, her father uh, works as uh, a Gideon, basically handing out Bibles. Uh, in Qatar, if you're caught with more than one Bible, you go to prison. Uh, her father came to the States and visited us uh, visited her, and actually he was in my home. Uh, we had a Bible study going on, and we were talking about the things that he was doing over there, and he was sharing this one story where they had come to the States, got a bunch of Bibles, uh, I think about 300 to be exact, of the New Testaments, stuffed them in their suitcases, and flew back to Qatar, and as they're going through customs, he knew that if they got caught, he and his entire family would go to prison for a very long time, a very long time. And as they're walking through, uh, the, the guards brought him into another room and asked him, if, do you have any books? And by that, he meant Bibles. And he said, I, I looked at him and I said, yes, because I wasn't going to lie. We, we have, I mean, there's no, if he opens the bag, they're just going to fall out. And he said it was as if the, the guard stood there and like a blank expression came over his face, like his memory was being wiped. And he stood there for a second and just stopped, didn't say anything. And then finally, when the silence broke, he said, okay, go. And as he got through customs and got to the other side, he actually heard uh, back, he was sharing that story with some of his Gideon brothers uh, here in the States. And somebody said, hey, we, we were with you at that convention when you took those Bibles. And, and here's the moment that we were praying for you is the exact moment that you went through customs that you would get through with those Bibles and be able to share the gospel with the people in Qatar. And yet, we're uncomfortable doing what God has called us to do here in the States because it might cost us a friendship or somebody looking at us a little bit differently. Let me share some personal stories. A number of years ago, uh, I was driving around downtown. I was dropping my dad off somewhere and uh, I saw a couple of Mormon missionaries. You know the type white shirt, name tag, tie, bicycle. They were riding around town talking to people about Mormonism, right? The Book of Mormon. And I remember distinctly, I, I felt like God had told me to pull over and to go talk to these guys. I wasn't a minister then. I wasn't in school for ministry. I, I knew a little bit about the Bible, but didn't know like a ton I knew that I had spent time with God and I, I kind of said, God, look, um, these guys are trained for this. They know the answers and how to refute Christianity in the Bible compared to what they know. It, they go through extensive training for this. You want me to go talk to them? Are you kidding me? So I pulled my car over anyway, because I knew that if I disobeyed God, it would be a little bit worse for me than if I didn't. <laughs> so I'll go over and I start talking to them and, uh, Man, if God didn't give me the words to say in the moment, um, we had talked about Revelation and, and, you know, I'd like to be a little facetious and at the, the end of Revelation says, do not add or take away from this book or to him will be added to uh, the plagues talked about in this book. And I know that's specific to that book. Uh, but I said, hey, what do you guys say about this? The Book of Mormon comes after that. And they said, oh, well, actually, you know what? It says the same thing in Deuteronomy. So I flipped to Deuteronomy and I'm like, um, no, actually it says about the 10 commandments. That's completely different. But from what you just said, everything after the book of Deuteronomy then is a lie, including the book of Mormon. So what are you talking about? And we had this awesome discussion afterwards uh, about the Bible and about the realities of who God is and their relationship and their faith and how, um, man, it was so different 
And then we actually had the break and we came back for another meeting. And they gave me the Book of Mormon and they told me to read this passage. And so I read the passage and it was very familiar to me uh, out, of, out of one of the books that Paul wrote. So we sit down again and for two hours just have this conversation about the realities of who God is, his word, uh, and their revelation of God. And I began to ask some questions. Man, have you ever spent time in the presence of God to where you could do nothing but weep because of how awesome his presence was? Where, where you don't care about anything else around you but spending time with him. Where God has shown you some crazy and amazing things. And they kind of looked at each other and said, no. We've never had that. And it began questioning again their faith and actually was walking with them through some of the other scriptures and they were questioning their faith and questioning more about who the true God is. And I would like to tell you that I followed up with them after that and they became Christians, but uh, I actually called the number that they gave me again and I got this very rude answer that the guy picked up and said they do not uh they're not here anymore and they don't ever call this number again and they hung up they had got shipped back to wherever they were from because they were questioning their faith but because i said yes to god even though i was uncomfortable we laid some seeds i know what you're thinking that's a small thing. It's something different. But what about my life? What about your life? What about the things that God has called you to do that might take you way outside of your comfort zone? Most of us <clears throat> would have no problem uh, doing things for God if it didn't cost us anything. I'm not saying that this cost me a great deal, but what I'm telling you is this, that uh, right now, like I said, I'm the campus minister for a local secular university. I run the Christian programs up there. But before that, before that, I worked for a bigger company, non-Christian company. I was making pretty good money. My wife and I had just bought our house uh, two years prior to me getting this other job. We had bought our house and our car on my salary alone. We had just had our first daughter uh, a few months before me getting this job, but I knew that I moved to this city specifically for ministry, that I, that I moved here specifically for a call that God had on my life. And as I began to look at the numbers for what this job would afford me in a way of pay, we're talking an over $10,000 pay cut to do the job that I'm doing now. Now, when you sit back and you look at the numbers, you're looking at like, man, okay, you just bought a house. You're paying for that on your salary alone. Uh, you just bought a car. Uh, you just had your first child. That's a lot of expenses to look at and to go back and say, you know what, God, you know, maybe this isn't right for me because the money's just not there. My wife and I sat down and we did our budget and on paper for the first, I don't know how many years of me having this job, we should be in the hole, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, just buying groceries and paying our bills. But it doesn't work out that way because God provides every step of the way. I cannot tell you how many times that I've seen God do some pretty incredible and amazing things, things that you would only read about in scripture because we fully rely on him for everything. Uncomfortability shouldn't lead us to shrink back. Uncomfortability should lead us to push into more of who God is and what he's called us to do. Do we not know the one that who calls us is the very same one who created all things, who sustains all things? God owns all things. If he's calling you to do something, he will provide. Your fear, it might be valid in your mind. It might be valid that they might not like you. It might be valid that you won't have enough money to live or to do the things that, that you want to do. But your fear in your mind that's valid is not valid in God's reality. Because again, God holds all things. So what are you afraid of? What is it that God has called you to do and you're sitting back thinking, I don't think I'm comfortable doing that. You know that God has called you to. What's your fear? Why are you still sitting there? If he has called you, 
Again, he will be with you every step of the way, and God never fails. Never. So when he calls us as men to lead lives of righteousness and holiness, when he calls us as men to lead our family, lead our wives, lead our children, when he calls us as men to lead in our communities, to make disciples, and to be real with one another, to be authentic, to be men of valor, why do we sit back and say, I'm just not comfortable doing that? He has given you everything that you need. Second Peter, and I love this because Eric did a teaching on this a little while ago. Second Peter says that God has given us all things. He has granted us all things that pertain to a life of godliness, right? All things. Is it like this? His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to a life of godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. All things. And yet we sit back and think, well, we don't have enough or we don't know enough or we're not strong enough or we're not good enough or, you know, my past is, is so messed up that no one would ever believe me. Yes, they will. Because it's not you who is speaking. It's God speaking through you. Don't shrink back in fear of what God has called you to. Man, reach out in faith. If, if, in any one of those situations, whether the Old Testament, the New Testament, currently right now, that any one of those people shrunk back and said, you know what, I'm just not comfortable enough to do that. God would have still done it anyway. He would have used someone else. Why not you? The Bible says that even the rocks would cry out if we fall silent, right? So why not you? Why not pick up what God has in store for you? Why not continue to press in wholeheartedly and live for the kingdom? Because what else is there? What could we possibly gain in this life that is worth giving up? the inheritance that God has for us. There is nothing. God is calling you. He chose you. I know you're thinking, oh, you're just talking to a room of people. No, no, specifically you, you, he chose you. Will you choose him? Will you choose to be obedient to him and what he's called you to do? A lot of the New Testament letters, they talk about, man, we are, we are servants of God. We are servants of Christ Jesus. We are servants of this. Translated, that means slave. Now, you can be a slave to sin, as Roman says, that you're bound by it, that there's no way out of it, that it has control over your life, and you can continue to follow in that path. And I think being uncomfortable and fearful leads into that path. Or you can be a slave to God the slave to righteousness, being bound by the things of God that he has called you to do, being bound by the holiness and righteousness that is in Christ Jesus, being bound by the spirit of power that he has given you, the spirit of love, the spirit of self-control, self-discipline, as 2 Timothy 2 says, or 2 Timothy 1, 7 says. God has called you. Will you be afraid? Will you be uncomfortable? Yes. Will he provide? 100% of the way. So let's use that fear. Let's use that uncomfortability that overtakes us at times. And again, press into who God has called us to be as men. This isn't a game. America is not quite as bad as the rest of the world yet as far as persecution of believers. But I believe it's getting there. And here's the thing. I can't wait until persecution like that comes to America cannot wait and i know that that sounds crazy but i know that that's going to do one of two things it's going to one weed out the people that who really don't belong and two the church the true church the true men and women of god will explode it will take this country by storm as it did in the new testament i can't wait Let's get uncomfortable. That's all I got.
Wow. That's all you got. That's all you got. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Man, Brad Dayton, dude, uh, what an awesome just reminder this morning. And as you was talking, man, when you was talking about, you know, how these other countries and these other believers, their their life is literally on the line daily just because of their faith, just because of their faith. And what I wrote down, and I, and I truly believe, man, it's coming to America. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to get here. It will. I mean, you just read scripture. It's coming. But why in the time that we have the freedoms that we have? Why not now? And when that time gets there, ask yourself this question. What if it does get there? What if it gets there by 2022? Where would I stand on it? Am I going to cower in fear? I asked my church this, you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago. What if right now, if the government told us that we can't meet, and if you meet, the military is going to come through your door and we're going to arrest everyone that won't leave? Would you still be here or would you leave? I said, I got a feeling in the American church today, We'd have a lot of people not sitting in the pew that Sunday if they knew as a possibility they might get arrested because they're just going together. So what if? Man, it's up to us. We're here to lead our families. And man, just Brad, what an awesome challenge for, for us men because it's going to be up to us, not our wives, not our children. It's up to us. As Brad was speaking and talking about uncomfortable, I thought of a statement I heard a pastor say, and it's so true, and I've used it before as well. Nowhere in Scripture will you find where God calls somebody to do something comfortable or where God calls somebody to do something that made sense. So if you're looking at something that's uncomfortable and it don't make no sense, there's a good possibility that that might be God calling you into something uh, because a lot of times we got to remember his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And then he says this, my ways are above your ways and my thoughts are above your thoughts. So man, what a challenge this morning, uh, Brad, thank you so much. Um, and I know for me, it's just a reminder, you know, it's not time. It's not time to sit back. It's not time to take it easy, but it's time. And we have the opportunity. I heard a missionary once come to America and he seen what all the American church was doing, all the programs, all the things. And, and they asked him when he was getting ready to leave to go back to his country. They said, man, what, what'd you think of, you know, our churches and thought again, he said, man, it's amazing what y'all can do without the power of God. Because we rely on our programs. We rely on our things. We rely on our religion instead of truly relying on the Lord. So men of God, man, take this challenge today and let's rise up. Let, don't be afraid to hand out that gospel track. Don't be afraid to have that gospel conversation when you know that there's somebody there and the Holy Spirit speaking to you to, hey, have a conversation with them. Let's not be afraid. Let's don't be cowards. Let's go out and be what the name of this conference is. Let's go out and be men of valor. I want to remind you, man, one of the places where the men of valor is used in scripture is with Gideon. Where Gideon was hiding in the wine press. And the angel come to him and called him a man of valor. And Gideon wanted to make excuses. That's not me. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. That, I, I'm no, that's not me. I'm not a I'm not a warrior. I'm not. He made excuses. But he was calling himself who men had called him, and he was naming himself on who he had named him. And that's what a lot of us do. I can't do that because I'm not a preacher. I can't do that because I'm not a pastor. I can't do that because I haven't went to Bible college, as Brad was talking about earlier in his earlier days. You know, because I haven't went all these things, I can't. Oh, yes, you can because God has equipped you and God has called you. So, man, what an awesome challenge today. Nobody threw their hand up, so uh, I'll talk. <laughs> but, man, just Brad, thank you. I can't wait to hear what God puts on your heart for August. So, man. Just another opportunity and another should be, uh, man, hope you can get to be with us in August. And, man, if we got these breakout sessions, you you ain't going to lose no matter which one you choose, which which two you choose. But, uh, man, just uh, so many. I, I'm sitting here going, I don't know which one I'm going to choose. And I know all the speakers, and I know kind of what all they're going to be bringing. So uh, love you, man. Man, at 6 o'clock right on the head.
Uh, so thankful for each of you. Let me pray for us, Brad. Thank you again, man, for sharing this morning and getting up early and just uh, coming and bringing the heat. And I pray that you men were challenged. But hey, as James says, just don't be hearers of the word. Go be doers and go light it up for Jesus today. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We're just thankful for the challenge that we've heard today. And God, that in these moments when our flesh gets uncomfortable because what the Spirit is calling us to do, may we be reminded, as Scripture teaches us, that it's a constant warring between the flesh and between the Spirit. And God, they're, they're at odds with one another. But Father, may we be so close to you as men of God that we say yes, Lord, to whatever the Spirit is calling us to do, even though it may be uncomfortable, even though our flesh is screaming, don't do it. May we do it for your honor and your glory. May we be reminded that you tell us, God, in, in those times when we're questioned, in those times when we feel like we don't have the words, that is when the Holy Spirit steps in and will give us the words and will guide us if we were just followed. Father, be with these men as they go out to their workplaces, to their families, to wherever it is that they're going today. And may they be salt and light. And may they go be uncomfortable for the kingdom. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you, man. Have a great week.